Part 2. Number two, Dragon Quest was a narrative. It was a novel that you could play. I suspect this was largely because Yuji Horii had a degree in literature, so he had a strong understanding of narrative form and how to incorporate that into a video game. The narrative element of the game is probably what made the Dragon Quest series really popular. Although the first game isn't the best example, the plot of the game is still part of the gameplay experience. From the moment the player logs in, they are pulled into a story with the king announcing their quest, and all the NPCs wandering around offering advice or just commenting on things. This is distinctly unlike Wizardry and Ultima, where you didn't just read about the plot in an instruction manual and never again did the plot play a role in the game, nor was your character just spawned onto a game map without any explanation of what your character was to do. In Dragon Quest, all the gameplay centered around the plot and the characters in the plot. The hero was still a silent protagonist for most of the game, but people talked to him and had something of substance to say. Their statements changed as the plot advanced. There wasn't just one goal standing in the instruction manual, and the game was just a bunch of obstacles in the way of that one goal. After you save the princess in Dragon Quest, there is still much more for the hero to accomplish in his story. And at the end of the game, the protagonist speaks in his own words to the king. So he was in fact a real character of his own thoughts, feelings, and dreams. Most importantly, the fights and dungeon exploration are just obstacles standing in the player's way from seeing the story, whereas games like Wizardry and Ultima used the plot as excuses for the gameplay and were more of an afterthought. Console style games usually have the plot written first, and then someone else makes a gameplay engine to match that story, which is usually why console style RPGs have battle systems custom built for that specific title. The Japanese have come to think of computer RPGs as games that offer character customization and strong narrative experiences, and this idea really harkens back to Dragon Quest. So Dragon Quest, and consequently the console style RPG genre, can be thought of as games which broke away from the path set forth by Wizardry and Ultima. Meanwhile, the dungeon crawlers which followed in the footsteps of Wizardry and Ultima just reused the same battle systems between games, usually with only minor tweaks made to improve them, because the developers had a completely different development process, and this is evident by just looking at what aspects of the game are emphasized. Gamers started calling these games PC-style RPG games because their complex systems were only released on personal computers, and that moniker continues to be used today, especially on places like Game FAQs. Now because Dragon Quest is the template for a whole genre of games which came after it, we know console style RPGs are computer RPG games with lighter combat mechanics than dungeon crawlers, have systems that make map exploration easier, and a strong narrative to accompany the gameplay. They don't need to have turn-based combat, but they do need to have an emphasis on dungeon crawling, and they must also have little to no emphasis on non-combat related skills because they aren't really important to the player's goal. To be more clear, the goal of the player is not to explore a virtual world, but to progress through the chapters of a story. Console style RPGs are distinct from PC style RPGs because PC style RPGs are basically a refinement of Wizardry and Ultima in the opposite direction that Dragon Quest went. They retain their close relationship with tabletop role-playing games. For example, character creation and combat are heavily derived from their mechanics, especially Dungeons and Dragons, and the plot is mostly just an excuse to dungeon crawl. The player's character really has any kind of personality. It's most common today for these games to revolve almost exclusively around going on quests until the fight with the big bad. So the goal of a player in a PC style game is not to progress through a story, but to explore a virtual world. The differing goals of these games are the crucial things to remember when you think about is this a console style or a PC style game. Today, simply being released on a console or a PC has nothing to do with what genre it belongs to. It's all about the design of the game and what the intended objective of the player is. This is why Lord of the Rings Volume 1 for the PC is not a console style RPG. The goal of that game is to carry the one ring from the start of the game to the end of the game with whatever characters survive. That's not a plot, that's an objective. And dumping a couple cutscenes into the game during certain events does nothing to really advance the plot because you can actually avoid most of them. So the game basically doesn't have any plot at all. The whole game is really just one big dungeon to explore, which is why characters have non-combat skills for climbing, searching, reading languages, and whatnot. The heavy emphasis on exploration mechanics makes it a PC style game. And I would like to mention as a footnote that the graphical style of the game has no correlation whatsoever to whether it is a console style game or not. The reason most games made in Japan have manga style artwork is because that is the most popular art style in Japanese pop culture. Graphics in games usually resemble whatever art style is popular in the country and time the game is developed in. So when you really think about it, trying to categorize a game based on their graphics is really rather stupid. 
Game genres are defined by the elements that make up the game, not what the game happens to look like. Now I also want to point out that today is not the 1980s or the 1990s, where most developers were content to jump on bandwagons and imitate the hell out of what's currently popular. It is a brave new world we live in and the lines between genres are blurring so that it becomes harder to categorize newly produced games. More game designers are trying to experiment with game mechanics, so some games simply defy easy categorization. This is because games really are not designed to be categorized. Categorization is only possible when games have close similarities to other games, so the more unique a game is, the harder it is to categorize. I would say that most computer RPGs produced today share elements from both console style and PC style RPGs, and that world exploration and locking the story are both important. Massively multiplayer online RPGs like WoW are one example. The light's vaunted justice has finally arrived. Shall I lay down Frost One and throw myself at your mercy, Fordring? By the way, Legend of Zelda is not a computer RPG game. In fact, the only Zelda game that qualifies as one is Zelda 2. The reason is because in order to be a computer RPG, the game must have game mechanics that descends from tabletop RPGs. For example, a leveling system that uses experience points to determine a character's statistical growth. I stress again because a lot of people don't get this. Computer RPGs are not computer RPGs because you can roleplay in them, but because their mechanics descend from tabletop RPG games like D&D. Zelda 1 does not descend from any computer RPGs, it's just an action adventure game. I know there's a lot of people that will want to argue this, so let me elaborate on why the game mechanics of Zelda are very different than the mechanics of a computer RPG game. In a computer RPG game like Dragon Quest, the more enemies you kill will increase the strength of your character. This is a mechanic descending from tabletop RPG games. By comparison, in Zelda the number of enemies you kill doesn't make your character stronger. Gathering power-ups does. If you really tear away the graphics and look at the rule structure of Zelda, you will see it is actually very similar to Super Mario Bros. in that Link's hearts just serve as a graphical display of the number of hits Link takes before he dies. Mario works the same way, his size determines the number of hits he has remaining. Two if he is large and one if he is small. Both Mario and Link increase their hits by gathering power-ups. Although Link has a slightly more complicated bar because he can gather power-ups to extend his total number of hits at any one time. But the basic mechanic is identical between both games. No matter how many enemies Link and Mario defeat, their character does not grow stronger. The only way they can is by gathering power-ups. Compared to RPG games, where it is possible for a character to kill so many enemies that become statistically powerful enough to go through the game without using any kind of power-up. So in summary, for a game to be a console-style RPG, it must be a more user-friendly version of Wizardry and Ultima, which are computer RPG games with gameplay descending from Dungeons and Dragons. The objective to play the game must be to experience the narrative, much for the same reasons people read fictional books or like watching movies. A console RPG is really just a novel with interactive gameplay elements attached to it, and seeing the story unravel is the primary goal of the player. It has not a damn thing to do with manga-style graphics or even what country the game was made in. If you've watched this video to the end, you now know more about the roots of console-style RPGs and what they are than the game reviewers who work for American magazines. So next time you see one of them write a review and say something stupid like, JRPGs are a genre, leave a comment on their blog or video or whatever and tell them how misinformed they are. Better yet, tell them to watch my video.